Today I'd like to show you a little practice assignment that we're gonna be working on over the next couple of days. And that is gonna to be to learn how to make a little three-dimensional polyhedron or multi-sided form. So now we have been learning about the elements of art and this little polyhedron is gonna be a way for us to practice um, understanding and representing the different elements of art. You guys will be making yours on white cardstock paper in your set of supplies that you've picked up, you should have a piece of paper that looks like this that is on nice, heavy, thick cardstock. So this piece of paper, hold on to this and make sure that this stays in really nice condition. This is for your final product. We are not gonna use this piece yet. But you should have a little thin piece that says practice page at the top, and this is what we're gonna be creating um, a practice version of our polyhedron design on. So let me walk you through the steps of what this assignment is gonna take. Um, each side of this polyhedron is gonna have and represent one of the elements of art plus one sort of title side. So this side here, I've got it labeled with my elements of art. I also, very tiny in the corner, have my name written on it. Um, and then I'm gonna walk through and show you all of the elements and how I chose to represent them. So for my first side, I chose lines. And with this one, you can create any design that you wanted, but I decided to make a little pen and colored pencil illustration of a landscape with all different types of lines making it up. And notice I've incorporated the word lines up there into my landscape. For shapes, I just did a very simple little illustration with different triangles. I just broke this one larger triangle up into different smaller triangles, really neatly making kind of a cool geometric base pattern. And then I just very simply went through and chose different colors and shaded each triangle from dark to light just to make it visually really interesting. For form, I decided I wanted to create an interesting little optical illusion because we know that forms are three-dimensional things. So I went on the internet and I found a resource picture that I sort of based this off of. For my representation for texture, I decided to use um, a, just a very simple symbol of a hand because with texture, it's all about that tactile quality. And then in each one of these little corners, I drew a different type of texture. So I've, um, for color, for this one, I chose to do just a very, very simple round color wheel. And I wanted to create a really soft, subtle color wheel. You know, like if you go into the old vintage Microsoft Paint application, you used to be able to pick your color and it used to look like an old fashioned little color wheel like this where everything was very smoothly blended. And then since this is a triangle, the three corners that were left ended up being perfect for me to incorporate the three primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. So that was how I chose to represent my color in this image. For space, um, we talked about space in two different ways. We can talk about positive or negative space in two dimensions, or we can also talk about three-dimensional space with depth and things moving back in space. So for this one, I sort of did a play on outer space and depth of space. I created a little astronaut up here in the foreground, and I just labeled it four, and his shuttle back here in the middle ground, and then in the far background, I have a little planet and I've labeled that background. And I've also created my word space, moving back in space, going from big to small with little tiny sort of constellation stars, um, symbols making up the letters. Um, for my value one, I created just a very simple little arrangement of rays and took different colors and made little miniature value scales with each one of them. And then inside my word value with pencil, I shaded a little miniature value scale on each letter starting from light and working my way to dark. So colors can have values as well as grayscale can have values. For your design, you are going to be able to design each panel however you would like as long as it creates a visual representation of each one of those elements of art. So what we're gonna do is with your practice page, your assignment for today is gonna be to create um, a little design as a planning page to figure out what you want to do on your polyhedron. 
So this is not going to be a finished, beautiful, perfect page. Instead, what this is going to be is, is sort of a loose pencil sketch with you kind of figuring out how you want to lay out each one of these little triangles. So don't spend forever on each one. This is just going to sort of be um, what I call kind of roughing it in or mapping it out or doing a little thumbnail sketch. This is not meant to be as neat and pretty as it's going to be on your final product. This is just for you to use this page to plan. So what I'd like to do now is walk you through the steps of completing your practice page or your planning page in order to start and figure out the layout for each triangle on your polyhedron. So I took just a couple of minutes and started doing a little bit of brainstorming and I used some of this side area for me to plan. One thing that I decided to do is that since my last polyhedron was fall themed, I thought that I would kind of go along with that and do another season. I thought maybe having a theme to this would help me come up with ideas more easily rather than having it be so wide open and open-ended. So I decided to look at a summer-based theme with each element of art being represented by something from the summertime. So I just did a quick little brainstorm session. It took me about 10 minutes and I decided for line, I'm gonna do a pineapple shape and fill it in with different types of lines in a Zentangle style inside my triangle. For shape, I decided I would use sunglasses, um, the different, and create maybe like a little series of different shaped sunglasses, just very simple, like a little illustration since each of the frames is a flat shape that doesn't have any depth to it. For form, I decided I'm gonna create little illustrations of watermelon slices, like half of a watermelon, which would be half of a sphere, one sliced section of watermelon, that would be a three-dimensional form. For my texture one, that one took me a little bit of time to figure out because texture was sort of tricky. I initially thought maybe I would work with, you know, a summer rainstorm and create a cute like little illustration of, um, of clouds raining with a cute little umbrella and maybe talk about wet versus dry texture. But then I came up with a better idea. I thought about in the summertime, I always love to go to the beach and stick my toes in the sand. So I thought sand is a great texture. Sand is really gritty. And I thought it would be neat and very simple to do a little illustration of maybe footprints in the sand, the way you feel the sand squishing in between your toes. I thought that would be a really cute little illustration to represent texture. For value, I have fallen in love with some of these really great summer motif prints. So I decided for value, I would create a little layered design with lots of different tropical style plant leaves and I would shade them from light moving to dark. And then that way I would have a nice like little value scale with those. For space, I decided of course, what better thing to do than create a little triangle with a beach scene. So I'm gonna have the sand and then moving in, I'm gonna have some like white waves crashing on the sand right here and then moving back into the ocean and have a really pretty like little drawing of the sun back in the sky with some clouds back there. And that's a really good representation of depth of space. And then last but not least for color, I decided at the beach in the summertime, what's something that everybody does and that's play with those big colorful beach balls. So I decided I would do a really simple like little illustration of those beach balls where if you know, if you remember, they're always sort of striped with white and then a color and then white and a color and white and a color. So I thought I'd do one beach ball with yellow, blue, and red, my primary colors. And then I'd do a second beach ball with the, my secondary colors, orange, green, and violet. And I thought that would be a really cute, fun, sort of playful way. And all of those illustrations were much easier for me to come up with because I had a, a cohesive theme. However, you do not have to have a theme. These can be completely open-ended. Representing something, each one of those elements in a creative, original, and unique way is something that I'm looking for. I, I certainly will allow you to go on the internet and look up resource pictures if you need help seeing how to draw something. For example, I maybe am gonna need to look up and see what those tropical leaf shapes look like. That would be a fine thing for me to research, but the idea of creating an overlay of them with them stacked together making a value scale, 
That is my own original idea. I'm not taking that from another resource. Um, the beach balls. Again, to do them as a color wheel is my own original idea, but I may have to go online and look up a resource picture for what do those beach balls look like. So I hope that that makes sense as you were starting the planning portion of your, of your project. So now I'm gonna go through, and I'm gonna speed this video up really quickly, but I'm gonna show you how I go through and just start to plan and map out this project. It does not matter which triangle you start in or which triangle is going in which direction for this project. Once it all gets put together, it's not gonna matter. So you can pretty much start wherever you would like. 